in August 1982, on a tropical winter's day at Crystal Creek, near Townsville, Reverend Charles Harris and other Indigenous leaders challenged invited national and state church leaders with their vision for a truly Indigenous church that would develop an Australian theology, call churches to action and develop a Christian commitment to the struggle of the oppressed First Peoples of Australia. Representatives from the Uniting Church were among the invited guests. And so it was, members of the Fourth Assembly heard the challenge, and in 1985, the United Aboriginal and Islander Christian Congress was born. This is our story, Congress story. But also your story has members of the Uniting Church in Australia. As a proud, reachable, and give all woman from the Bundjalung Nation from the Northern Rivers. But also on behalf of my Wuhadri, Gamilla Roy and other Congress sisters and brothers, I share this story with you for it is your story as well. It's a story that offers a vision for a truly reconciled Australia in the spirit of Christ. It is our shared story. The Uniting Church is the first church in Australia to constitutionally acknowledge Aboriginal and Islander peoples as the first peoples of Australia. Since its beginnings in 1985, Congress has been responsible for ministry and mission to its own people. Congress adopts a holistic approach, believing it cannot share the gospel without addressing the economic and social disadvantages its people labour under. Last year, we celebrated the 30th anniversary of the recognition of Congress by the Uniting Church in Australia Assembly. In New South Wales and the ACT, Congress is an active and vital reality with nine ministry centres and two new ministries in Cabbage Tree, Ballina and George Rivers planned. A priority for Congress is equipping members for ministry to their own people and communities. Some are involved in theological lay education for leadership. Donations from congregations to the Living is Giving, Aboriginal Women in Leadership Appeal, funded sisters Diane Torrens, Moraine Roberts, and Queenie Speeding to participate in Uniting Mission and Education's Living Our Faith series. Three Aboriginal students are currently studying for their Bachelor of Theology here at UTC. Plans are well advanced for distance education for a Master's in Indigenous Theology offered by the North American Institute for Indigenous Theological Studies, which will be through the College of Theology and other universities commencing in 2017. The goal is to train future Indigenous teachers in theology to provide graduate courses for Indigenous students. Although an autonomous entity within the Uniting Church, Congress is always keen to work with presbyteries and congregations in the spirit of the covenant established nationally between Congress and the Uniting Church at the 1994 Assembly. Congress, working with other people in the church, wants to close the gap and help Aboriginal Islander people achieve spiritual, economic, social and cultural independence. And we seek to journey together in a covenant relationship. Christ has bound us all to himself, giving himself for us. And he has bound us to each other with his commandment to love one another as I have loved you. There's no doubt 
Congress members are stretched to maintain their existing ministries, but nonetheless have a heart to see the gospel shared with other communities. We need to strengthen our financial and people resource base for ministry and mission. We need to plan together for the future. We can't do it alone. Congress is keen to engage with the wider church and be inclusive. Entering into partnership with church on the basis of mutual respect and as equal partners. One such ministry is in George's River Presbytery. Yeah, well, we've created a, a creating a church for Aboriginal people over in Janelli, uh, particularly in Janelli because it's close to transport train and other ways of access uh, to get to church. We think it's important for Aboriginal people to be able to get to church. If, it, if, it, if there's a bit of a block there, then they won't come. Uh, we also will be having a feed, which Aboriginal people love to have a, something to eat. Uh, we'll be running the service like a, a yarning circle where we all get around a circle and we tell stories and we, we, we um, uh, work with um, the culture in a sense that way and people can actually express how they feel about things and, and particularly you know, things that are happening around them in their own community. Uh, and then we can um, share that and in that I'll be sharing some of the, um, I'll be leading that through that circle but also sharing some of the gospel message that Jesus gives. We've got a team of six of us that uh, three of those people are actually going to our United Church College in, in Parramatta and uh, they, they are um, doing their Bachelor of Theology which is great news for us as Aboriginal people to have education like that happening where people are going forward and and, and going into ministry. Uh, so hopefully we can start more churches and other things can happen later. Congress is also working in partnership with the joint Western Presbyteries of New England Northwest, Riverina and Macquarie Darling to establish a rural and remote ministry team, one of whom would be an indigenous person designated to work with other team men members to minister to First Peoples and others in this region. The generous decision by Macquarie Darling Presbytery to make the Condoblin Church and Manse available for establishment of a new Congress Ministry Centre in the town gave great heart to Congress members. In order to reactivate the covenanting process, Reverend Colin Bradford has agreed to serve as a covenanting facilitator across the Synod inviting presbyteries and congregations to appoint covenanting facilitators within their regions, local churches and communities. In this spirit, Congress is currently working with Uniting for the placement of a community development person to work with Congress local ministry centres in developing programs to respond to the needs of First Peoples in their local churches and communities. We invite you to reflect with us on this passage from Ephesians. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to an end our hostilities. Well, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we did get to see the, uh, the video because I, I sense a lot of people know about Congress. I mean, they've heard Congress, but, but how many of us know actually just how um, living and vital that, uh, that the group of people are? Uh, nine, nine centres, um, 
around uh, New South Wales and, and more uh, being planned. And Uncle Ray, um, I, I think he was here last year, wasn't he, uh, is actually in Canada at the moment making a presentation to uh, NATES, the North American Indigenous um, Theology um, Institute that, uh, that we hope to introduce a master's uh, course in, in Indigenous Theology here in Australia. So uh, he, he's the other half of me. Uh, we, we share a full-time placement, but uh, yeah, it, it's great having a colleague uh, like that. But the word uh, for today. I was there when the Almighty created the heavens, set the clouds in the sky, gave the seas their boundaries and set their limits on the shoreline. When the foundation of the earth was laid, I was the skilled artisan standing next to the Almighty. I was God's delight day after day, rejoicing at being in God's presence, rejoicing in the whole world and delighting, delighting in humankind. Yeah, what beautiful poetry. A wonderful image from the Hebrew scriptures. The spirit of wisdom personified as a young woman, Sophia, present in the very act of creation. The beginning of wisdom is wonder in the, wonder in the awesome spirit of creation that surrounds us all and gives us life. The beginning of wisdom is an awareness of the interrelated wholeness of life. You know, this awesome insight is also profoundly present in the opening stanza of the inspired prologue of the fourth gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. In such moments of insight, we sense the creation is not some random accidental event, that there has been something eternal embedded in the universe from the very beginning. A creative mind or spirit that gives meaning to our world and existence. And that we live and have our being within that eternal mystery. An awareness of the interrelatedness and wholeness of life. In um, recent years, the fourth gospel the Gospel according to St. John has taken on renewed significance for me when I read a particular commentary and I began reading it from the perspective of the biblical wisdom literary tradition personified in the Hebrew scriptures by the feminine spirit of Sophia and now made flesh in Christ. The eternal truth that was there in the beginning and gives life to all. But I have to say that just in uh, the last couple of weeks this truth was profoundly reinforced for me just by one of our UAICC, one of our Congress members, uh, Fred Logan. I think actually Fred worshipped here last Sunday. Uh, I heard during the week through um, a friend in DY. But, but a couple of weeks ago Fred said to a group where I was present, you know, God didn't come to this place in a big ship with white sails 200 years ago. God's always been here in this place. Our people have known that for thousands of years. It's just that we didn't know the little boy by his side. The little boy by his side. Fred went on to share how for him as an Aboriginal Christian that little boy Jesus 
had revealed the presence of God in a whole new way that enabled him to associate, interpret and integrate the spiritual insight and faith of his own peoples who have known this sacred creative presence embedded in the land since the beginning of time to relate that to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the light of all people. For Fred, I sense the good news of Jesus Christ did not discredit or displace the wisdom and insight of his own people, the first peoples, but enables him to understand the spiritual journey he is on as one of an unfolding mystery and a search after truth that has existed since the foundation of the earth was laid. You see, a seamless thread from the dreaming of the first peoples through the wisdom of Sophia and profoundly revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. However, not only was this creative spirit of God present from the beginning, but that spirit was also the life and light of all people in John's prologue, delighting in all humankind in the spirit of Sophia. The creative spirit of God present in the act of creation was not solely the God of the Hebrews, but delighted in all humankind. The word made flesh in the gospel was the light, life and light of all people. Can we see what this means? The wisdom of Sophia and the word made flesh there from the beginning awaken within us an awareness of the interrelated and interdependent wholeness of our world and all peoples. As I reflected on the interrelatedness of God's creation, I was reminded of the words of that great Indian political reformer, Mahatma Gandhi, who once said, I am a part and a parcel of the whole, and I cannot find God apart from the rest of humanity. It is a profound statement, not only about the interrelatedness of creation, but also the interdependence of humankind in all its diversity, differing cultures and differing life experiences, or in the spirit of wisdom, Sophia, this morning. We rejoice as being in God's presence, rejoicing in the whole world and delighting in humankind. Well, what has all this to do with the week of prayer for reconciliation 2016? That all of us who like Sophia delight in the creation and sense we may be created in the likeness of God. A call to be agents of reconciliation and healing within our own land. As Gandhi reminds us, if any human being suffers injustice or is oppressed or marginalised, then we are no longer in harmony with the Spirit of God who created us in wholeness and intends us to live in peaceful unity with all creation. While Aboriginal people continue to be marginalised and ignored, whilst their stories remain unheard or worse, denied, then we in God's creation cannot be whole. Just as in ecological terms, our survival depends on how we care for the whole creation, so too our own well-being and the physical and spiritual well-being of our Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters are inextricably bound to ours. While the life expectancy of Aboriginal people remains around 10 years less than for other Australians, we are all diminished as a people. While the infant mortality rate for Indigenous children is nearly twice that for all Australian children, we are diminished as a society. 
And whilst the unemployment rate for Indigenous adults remains at 16%, we are all diminished. And yes, while Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women and children live in fear of physical and sexual abuse from their own and other menfolk, then we too are diminished as a society. Not until all people are able to share in the interrelated wholeness of God's creation expressed through the wisdom of Sophia and John's prologue can we fully claim to be in tune with the spirit of Christ. Or in the words of Aboriginal woman Lilla Watson, if you have come to help me, you're wasting your time. But if you feel your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. Let us then take into our being the interrelated, interdependent wholeness of God's creation and become Christ's agents of reconciliation and healing within our own relationships, our own communities, Australian society, and yes, the world. And as the formal apology by the Australian Parliament a few years back acknowledged the pain and hurt of past deeds, so now let us work in consultation, in covenant relationship with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in addressing issues that are the legacies of these policies. Issues of health and life expectancy for children, encouragement for Aboriginal people to take advantage of educational and employment opportunities that emerge, and yes, in consultation, in consultation, covenant relationship with Aboriginal people address issues of social dislocation, physical and sexual abuse in their communities, but also be honest and, and admit that these are problems that exist in the wider community as well and not choose to criminalise their whole culture. So then, let us take to heart the words of Gandhi. We are a part and parcel of the whole and we cannot find God apart from the rest of humanity. For then and only then, in harmony with the spirit of Sophia and the word made flesh, in harmony with all creation, we will truly understand and experience the beginning of wisdom. Amen.